Hey friends, a couple years ago, I made a groom's cake that I am dying to make again. It was a giant corn dog. I love giant corn dogs. <laughs> I know you do, but this is a corn dog made out of cake. Oh, I love giant cakes. <laughs> yes, let's do it. So when I'm doing a sculpted cake, I like to have the inspiration in front of me, whether it's pictures or like an actual corn dog. Yeah, sorry that Brandon ate all the uh, actual corn dogs that we had sitting here. <laughs> Brandon! I, I made them in the toaster. <laughs> they were so, they were so flat. So I'm stacking up six to eight layers using peanut butter buttercream, and I'm gonna get this in the cooler to firm up completely before we carve it. Like frozen? Not frozen, but like really cold. Once the cake is really cold, it's time to carve. So when I do this, I usually use a couple different kinds of knives. So I have the cake slayer, the long serrated knife, and then I have a smaller one. When you're sculpting a cake, just remember, it's much easier to take more away than it is to put it back. So take your time and make small, small cuts. You're not really wasting anything if you have family and friends to give it to, or you can turn it into cake pops or... Cake yeah. smoothies. <laughs> yeah. Actually, or just give it to your friends that are there making the cake with you. Ooh, cake, smoothie, cake smoothies sound good. They'd be more like a cake milkshake. Smoothies like perceived healthy. Brandon. <laughs> Once the cake is sculpted exactly like I want it, now it's time for a crumb coat. So this is just a coat of chocolate buttercream to keep all the crumbs in place so that I can do my final coat and all the crumbs are trapped. So this plastic tool is actually a fondant smoother, but I use it on cakes that have buttercream, that have rounded edges, because you can bend it and smooth it. Could you use like a credit card? <laughs> no. You actually could use a laminated business card. I think I'm gonna make business cards that on one side say my name and then the other side are just a cake smoother. <laughs> hey, there, there's our first product. So after the crumb coat, you wanna make sure you get it back in the cooler and then get it firmed up again and then we'll final coat it. After I final coat it, I always put it back in the cooler and before fondant, I sort of zhuzh it and tighten it up. Use my fingers a little bit, make sure it's completely smooth and ready to go and then roll out the fondant with snow. 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 Hey, it's been a while, Joshua. What's in the snow again? So the snow can be either powdered sugar or cornstarch or a mixture. I like to use powdered sugar. You can use whatever you want. As long as it's cornstarch or powdered sugar. I've been using a... Uh... No, whatever you're gonna say, the answer's no. <laughs> you're not gonna you use baby powder. Gonna you're not gonna use flour. You're not using any of that. Please use either cornstarch or powdered sugar. I always roll my fondant to an eighth of an inch thickness. With something like this, I go a little bit thicker, and you'll see why, because I wanna sort of pinch the edges and get like this crusty sort of look, like, like pinching a baby's cheeks. Why did you choose to use chocolate cake, too? I wanted to know that. This doesn't look like the inside of a... Well, I think about if you go to a party, right, and there's a giant cake that's a corn dog and it's vanilla inside, I'm going home. Like, it needs to be something cool inside. So I figured, why not chocolate cake with peanut butter? So to get the fondant on the cake, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can roll it up in your rolling pin and then gently roll it over, but that's no fun. I like to flop it over my arm and just flop it over the cake. It's a, it's a little caveman, but whatever, it works. Do you ever get arm hair in there? No, I didn't get arm hair in there. That's no, I didn't ever. So around the opening of the corn dog, imagine it's been bit, right? I'm pinching all the way around so that once I airbrush, it looks like it was bit off. So like here, I, here's 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 the hot dog right here, and then I'm pinching around here. Okay. <laughs> And then the very tail end where it starts to taper, I have to leave some of the fondant sort of hanging and then I impaled the thing with a dowel. So now it's time to put the corn dog on its stick. So I size it up. Get a pair of bolt cutters. <laughs> Get a pair of, no, they're just like PVC cutters. If you cut around a thick dowel, you can just pop it in half. And then like a caveman, because there's no pencil sharpener this wide, I literally had to whittle it down to make a prison shank. To make a shank. No, to make it sharp. And then you gotta feed it through the bottom into the cake 
Make sure you size your dowel up first to see exactly how much you want to go into the corn dog. Sharpen it and then insert it. And then all the loose ends at the bottom, use mirror glaze, just tuck them. Just try to think about what a corn dog looks like at the end. It's sort of holding on to the corn dog and just kind of squeeze it on there. So I want to airbrush this thing, but before that, we got to get some texture on here because if you guys have ever seen a corn dog or held a corn dog, it has like, like if you run your hand on it, it's like not completely smooth. So the best way to do that is to paint some piping gel or mirror glaze and put something on it that's coarse. I'm using sugar. You can't use salt, none of that. You need something really, really coarse. So sugar works. Go ahead, James, what, what's your idea? Baking powder. No, baking powder, you guys, that goes inside the cake. The sugar really does add the texture that I want. It's really nice. And when I start to airbrush this thing, because I've made this before, I know it will pick up some of the dark browns and look super cool. Airbrushing is one of my favorite things. I used to hate it, and for some reason now I love it. And I think it's because I discovered that when you airbrush something, you do it in layers. And most of my work happens in layers. So to airbrush a corn dog, you gotta think about what underneath that crust looks like. When it goes into the fryer, it's yellow. So we're starting with yellow. So the next layer I'm gonna do is orange. And then after that, I'm just putting like orange, yellow, and brown together in different mixtures inside my cup, shaking it up and seeing what color comes out on a paper towel. If I like it, I spray it. If I don't, I add more color. So just use all the colors from the 70s. No, I need somebody to invent an airbrush color that's called chicken skin. <laughs> it could be chicken skin or labradoodle. No, chicken skin or golden doodle, either one. Once I get it the color that I want, one of my favorite things about airbrushing is shadows. So I put a very dark color in, I do this with most of my work, and then I actually make my own shadows sort of underneath the corn dog, towards the, towards the stick where it would brown a little more, just to give it a little bit more depth and dimension. To make the inside of the corn dog, because I want it to like it's bitten, like the, the batter that's around, the easiest thing I can think of is just leftover cake. I have a lot of leftover cake. If you don't, you can just bake some. This is just box cake mix. Once it cools, just crumble it up with your hands and it, it pretty much looks like the inside of a corn dog. <laughs> I thought it was cornbread. It doesn't taste like, actually cornbread would work if it was a sweet cornbread, that would totally work. Right on you, Brandon. The best way I could think of to get the crust, the batter part that's cooked on the end of the corn dog, is to use mirror glaze or piping gel. I have mirror glaze, but I'm gonna wipe it on pretty thick and then just sort of like smush all of it on there. Hey Joshua, do you like corn dogs? Like, do you eat corn dogs normally? That doesn't seem like something you'd be into. I don't like corn dogs. Let me tell you this, growing up, you know how like babies, moms like cut up little hot dog franks and put on their like tray with like other things? I would eat around the hot dogs. I've never enjoyed processed meat, still don't. But I would get a corn dog and rip all the crust off and dip it in ketchup. Or if they had the ones that were just filled with cheese, ugh. Yes. Now we have to make the color of the hot dog, which is uh, bologna pink. <laughs> I don't know what color that is. Spam coral. Uh, what other color? Flesh color. Flesh. But how do we make it sound uh, like more beautiful? Like uh, fresh spring, flesh spring. <laughs> Gross. In order to make our bologna pink, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna add pink and orange and brown and see what happens. Actually, I got it the first shot. It looks just like spam and we're ready to go. <laughs> now that I have my bologna pink color, I'm gonna roll it out really thick and then take a piece of aluminum foil, ball it up and that is the perfect thing to get texture. So I'm going all over it until I get the texture I want and then I squeeze it all together and it looks like the end of a broken hot dog. <laughs> it's kind of creepy, but it's okay. I cut it out. It's just a small cake bowl, but it, but it works. So it fits the size that I want. In order to make this thing look realistic, I think the best thing to do is to take my same cutter cut into my batter, my crust, pull that away and sort of inset the end, the bologna pink, the end of the hot dog into the end of the corn dog. And then it will look like it's actually part of it and protruding. 
I think for a little more dimension, and because hot dog franks are like a different color on the outside to the inside, I, I want to use like some airbrush color. So I'm going to mix pink and red and go over it with a brush and just see if I can get it to be a different color. So the last thing I want to do for the hot dog in order to make it realistic is add a little bit of mirror glaze so it looks like juicy. I know it's gross. So guy, but cool. Now it's time for mustard and ketchup. I've only made mustard and ketchup once out of icing. And the thing is, is that you don't realize that ketchup is like brick red, but like also bright. And then mustard is like, you think it's like neon, but it actually has a little brown in it. So to the red, I need to add red food coloring, orange and brown. And then to the mustard, I need to add yellow and a little bit of brown. It didn't take much, but I mean, I think I nailed these colors. You nailed them. Yeah. For the finishing touch to make this really realistic, I'm gonna add a few crumbs to the very end so it actually looks like it's been bitten. And that's it, my giant corn dog! Giant corn dog number two in the bag. Thank you guys for joining me. Please subscribe and like below. I'm Joshua John Russell, and you've been deserted. Wait, Brandon, don't put ketchup on that. <laughs> oh, too late. <laughs>